is nobody knows. Okay, so I wanted to look at what kind of things are happening in the snakes with regards to things like mercury. So if the mothers are eating a lot of fish, fish laden with mercury, are they transferring that to their babies? So that was the first thing I studied. And actually, this is a picture of one of my actual snakes giving birth to a neonate in the lab. So a baby snake is basically being born right there. And hopefully, what we see is some kind of effect of maternal transfer or transfer from parent to offspring of the mercury. And uh, basically what I did is I dosed the mothers and let that happen, so yes. And the second thing I looked at was how that mercury, if it was transferred, affected the baby's stress. So if I put them in a bag and shook them up, would it affect their hormone levels differently than if they, say, didn't have any mercury in them? So basically we have our you know, fashion-savvy dissection kits and basically took blood samples and looked at hormone levels and didn't find a whole lot of differences. So we had to make sure the mercury things were right, which is what my advisor and my colleague Ray Wright are doing right here. They're actually analyzing for mercury using a technique called atomic absorption spectroscopy. Yes. When you said you dosed the mothers, what do you mean by that? Okay, so what I did is we took mercury and dissolved it in corn oil and then put it in a little capsule and then just basically massaged it down their throat. So fed them a meal basically of mercury laden oil. So hopefully what happened is when they absorbed that that pill, that food and that oil, they uptake that they uptook that mercury. So, if that's the case, which it did. <coughs> okay. So, like I said, I don't just work on snakes. I am a herpetologist at heart, so I'm going to go through a few of the little neat things I found. Anybody know what this is? Turtle. It is a turtle. turtle. Well, what kind of turtle? Box turtle. Box turtle. Box turtle. Exactly. <laughs> Terrapin, <laughs> Carolina. <laughs> it is one of the few. It is one of the few terrestrial turtles, meaning it lives on land mostly. You mostly think of turtles as waterborne. And then this one is one of the few that actually primarily lives on land. Yes. My friend, he hates turtles. Get him right there. You probably tell him all the turtles. All right. What is this? Okay. How about this? Anybody know what this is? Legless lizard. It is not a legless lizard. It's a water snake. It's not a water snake. It's a garden snake. No. This is actually a baby king snake. This is a baby king snake. This is the same snake that, uh, or same kind of snake that uh, Coach Anderson killed last week. Yes. In the locker room. Sad. Sad. He killed a baby or a adult? It was full grown. You'll see an adult later. Yeah, this is what the babies look like. They have a nice little striping pattern. You can find them under rocks around here. You can just go around and poke into the rocks and they'll be sitting there just kind of chilling. I'd rather not. How about this? Anybody know what this is? Uh, it's a rattlesnake. Please. It is a rattlesnake. What kind of rattlesnake? Tennessee rattlesnake. Well, this is a Tennessee rattlesnake. <laughs> this is a timber rattlesnake. This is actually a baby timber rattlesnake we found over at Cedars of Lebanon. This is one of the few venomous snakes we actually have here in Middle Tennessee. This and the copperhead are the only two venomous snakes we have in basically the Nashville Murfreesboro area. If you go over towards Ashland City, you can get cotton mouths, but that's about as close as they get. So if you see one of these guys, don't touch it. <laughs> What I do, I pick it up. <laughs> How about this? Anybody recognize that? Oh. It's not a corn snake. No, it's not a corn snake. It's not a corn snake. It's a milk snake. Milk snake. Bingo. This is actually the eastern milk snake. So, we have two different snakes here in Middle Tennessee that actually look like this. This is the milk snake, and there's actually another species called the California king snake. Or not California king snake, the prairie king snake. I like so it looks like this, but the way you can tell the difference is the milk snake has this nice little Y pattern on top of his head. So that's the way you can really distinguish between them. They look so similar. And this is the water snake. This is actually a baby water snake. If you look, the patterning on the juveniles, the baby water snakes, is actually extremely vivid and bright. So if you get an older water snake, they a lot of times can be plain and nasty and ugly and smell bad and you know, whole spiel. But these guys are actually really neat. And this was actually found under a rock just down the road from here, I believe. How about this? Garter. Garter snake. Yeah, this is up at the Barfield Crescent in Murfreesboro. I found this guy just chilling in the sun. He's a little bit drab because this was only a couple weeks, no, actually last week. So, you know, they're still kind of a little bit dull. They're still trying to warm up. The, the warm weather's kind of new at this point. It's not, it's actually very early in the year for warm weather, so. 
All right, and this is the adult version of the king snake you saw earlier. As you can see, it's lost that nice striping pattern, but it's got, still got a nice patterning on its belly. This is also a Barfield crescent. Um, found him under a rock next to this stone wall. Can you so, just pick him up? Hmm? You just pick it up? Oh, yeah. He was just chilling there, so I picked him up. He didn't bite or anything. The garter snake must be, but yeah. It's no big deal to get bit by it. No, big deal to get bit by it. No, it's really not. As long as they're not venomous, it just feels like the worst it could feel like is sticking your hand in a briar bush. Well, hey, hey, you like blackberries. Hey, I don't know. I like blackberries. I don't know about you guys, but I'm gonna stick my hand in a briar bush for some blackberries. What you got? So how do you pick it up? You pick it up by the head? You pick it up anywhere. Yeah, as long as it's not venomous, you can pick it up anywhere. How you know it's venomous or not? We'll get to that. You know your snake. You gotta turn it upside down. No, but you gotta touch it to see. You gotta turn it upside down to see the line. You gotta touch it to see. You gotta see the pattern. You gotta let it bite you first. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's it right there. Okay, how about this? Getting away from the space. Oh, it's, it's, it's one of those. Hey, did you kill it? Alright. It's not a sink, it's not a salamander. Oh, it's a baby. It's a newt. It's a lizard. It's a lizard. What kind of lizard? It's a meal. No, this is actually a fence lizard, a baby fence lizard. Okay, so you can find these all over the place. If you go poke around, I guarantee you go out in the yard right now and pull it, lift up a rock, you'll probably find one of these. They're all over the place. No, we lifted rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you weren't looking at the right rocks. Yeah. So, so how big is that going to be? Run around real fast. About that big. <laughs> this is an adult version. I wish I had a better picture because actually this is out at Flat Rock Natural Area down in Murfreesboro. But right now, if you find a fence lizard that's an adult and it's a male, They'll be starting to get their breeding colors, and if you turn them over on their belly, they're really bright blue that runs up their sides, and that's how you can tell if they're male or female. So the, the females won't have that blue patterning right now, the males will. So they're really neat, really gorgeous oh, colors. The oh, and the dog is a friend of mine. Her name blue, is right? She's a sweetheart. That was it has blue on it, right? It is, it has blue. Yeah, yes. you can see it. I've seen them Oh, yeah. Yes, I do. Okay, oh. moving away from reptiles, how about this? Anybody recognize it? New. It is a salamander. You keep saying noob. <laughs> I don't have any new pictures. No, not yet. I still don't say noob. Okay. You know, anybody know what kind of salamander this is? No, but, I don't know. Uh, okay, this is the redback salamander, Plethodon cenarius. Okay, it's one of the few plethodontid species we have around here, meaning they're a terrestrial salamander. And uh, most of the time you find them in leaf litter under rocks, under logs. So if you go out in the woods somewhere and roll over a nice moist log, you might find one of these guys. It looks small enough to be one of the lungless lizards, is it? Uh, technically, plethodontids are lungless, but these guys do have small lungs. But yes. So, so they breathe through their skin or something? Mm -hmm. It's called cutaneous respiration. All right, here's another one from around here. What you got? Any, any ideas? Oh, it, is a salamander. it is a salamander. It's a new. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a salamander. The picture's a little blurry because this is from my stupid Blackberry phone, old, outdated technology. But this is actually a cave salamander. This is uh, Euresia lucifica. Okay, so these guys, they say they're cave salamanders, but they're really not. You can find them under rocks and water and in all kinds of different places, but really, they're not strictly a cave salamander. But they're really cool. You can see that nice orange color with the black patterning and everything. That's so big as we get. They're really unique. Yeah, that's about as big as we get. You might get a touch bigger if you're lucky, but the salamanders we get around here aren't usually that huge. Now, if you go out towards East Tennessee in the mountains, you can find things like black belly salamanders, which could be, you know, you know almost a foot long. So they get pretty serious. Let's see what else is there. Okay, how about this guy? It's a frog. frog. It's a toad. It's a toad. It's a toad. How do you how do you tell between a frog and a toad? It has a tail. I think frogs are more soft. Toads are bumpy. There you go. Toads are bumpy, basically. Frogs frogs have smooth, more moist skin, and toads tend to be a little bit drier, they bumpier. And the reason is because their skin on toads actually has a series of glands on them. They're called paratoid glands. Now these are paratoid glands right here, and they actually produce a toxin called bufotoxin, named after the, the genus of these guys are bufo. So don't go licking toads because it can kill you. Like oh, a family guy. Yeah, you can't. There are some toads you can do that. There are some toads you can do that to, there are some toads you can do that too, but it's not a good idea because literally you can you can die from it. So you it it's good thing you said that. They will not give you warts. I caught Seti licking that lizard the other day, so that's good enough. He be eating bugs. <laughs> 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 so 
So this is not from Tennessee, or at least not from this area, but this is what you can find out towards East Tennessee, past, or West Tennessee, past Ashland City. It's still cotton mill. It's actually me in Texas doing research on cotton mills. We're looking at hormone levels again. But it is a venomous snake, and we're trying to tube it so we can take blood samples from its tail. Do the venomous bites hurt worse than I got a question. Non venomous bites? I would not, never admit it in my opinion. So, yes. I would love to stop the venom for bone. How does what? The leather. Depends on how thick it is. I mean, these guys, which I mean, if you go to the next, if you look at this next slide, and, oh, it's blocking it. Okay, well, this is a cotton mouth in a tube. And you can see the head's about that long, and their fangs are about that long. So if you got thin leather, it can go through pretty quick. Okay, so who can point out the biggest key difference between these two snakes? Uh, the, pattern. The, ones in the, water. the pattern, yeah, that's a human. But what about what about the structure? Yeah, a land and a water. Mm -hmm. No. Eye shape. Eye shape. Eyes. I ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. the cottonmouth here has cat-like pupils. They're called elliptical pupils. Okay. If you look at the water snake here, the pupils are round. Oh, so the one of the cat like venomous. Exactly. That's one of the main ways you can tell between a venomous and non venomous snake, especially here in Tennessee, because all the venomous snakes we have in Tennessee are vipers, meaning they have this triangular shaped head, they have these elliptical pupils. Now, if you go down to Georgia and you find coral snakes, which are also venomous, they're elapids, meaning they are similar to these guys, and they have a rounder head and they have round pupils. So, for those, you have to know the pattern. But in Tennessee, if you're looking for venomous snakes versus non-venomous, you can look at that eye shape and know. And usually, you can see it from a pretty good distance away. I mean, if I was, if I was from me to that table, from a snake, you can see the eye pattern. So, yes. All right, with that, I'm pretty much done rambling. Any questions for me? Other than what you've asked? <laughs> Yes. Have you ever encountered one of them big, giant snakes, like an anaconda? I've not. Um, I've looked for them. What's the biggest snake, snake you've encountered? Um, we caught a water snake down in Texas that was probably four and a half, five feet long. So that's not that big. But for water snakes, let's put, that in, put it in perspective. The head was about as long as my palm. So if it were to, it could probably eat my finger. If it tried to bite me. Yeah. Questions up there. Yeah. What else? What do you do with the snakes after? After? You kill them? No, I don't kill them. You eat them like Mr. Taylor? No way. No way. I'm a naturalist, sir. I let them go. So, no, I, any snake I catch around here, first of all, collecting native, native species of snakes and native species of anything to Tennessee <coughs> is technically illegal, yes. You're not supposed to harass the natural wildlife around here. But as long as you're not perturbing them too bad, usually people don't mind. So, you know, you, you pick up a snake, you pick up a lizard, put it back where it was, and try to, try to fix the environment where you were and as it was before you disturbed it. That way, you know, you're not messing up their habitat. So, that's what I try to do anyway. What else? You ever been attacked by one? <laughs> attacked? I mean, not, not technically in the sense that you think.